So it's the A showcase, and we're having a, a good old gander at Mass Effect 3. Um, so I've had a chance to look at the multiplayer. Uh, why don't you talk us through some of why you're putting multiplayer in and what you're hoping to do with it? Sure, so uh, with Mass Effect 3 we've got our amazing single player campaign, the culmination of Shepard's story uh, through Mass Effect 1 and 2. At the same time, we also wanted to have a, a chance for players to play with their friends, uh, try something new. So uh, as we were working on it, we hit upon four player online co op as a gameplay mode we could add uh, in the spirit of the whole Galaxy War. That idea being that with Shepard starting the Galaxy War and the Reapers invading and taking Earth, there's infinite stories going on in the rest of the galaxy about you know, how the galaxy responds to this, to this infinite threat and this invasion and this war. So the, the uh, four-player online co-op is a chance to see uh, just a glimpse of some of those other stories that are out there in the universe. And, uh, one of the key parts is that the, the co-op will be able to influence kind of what's going on That's right, yeah. the player. How does that tie, all, tie it all together? Yeah, influence is a good word. I like that one because um, we're, we're definitely committed to keeping the multiplayer optional for players. Uh, we don't want single player completionists who are passionate with them to feel like they have to go do something else. Uh, they don't want to do. Uh, even as fun as multiplayer would be. Uh, so what we're doing is, is letting uh, we created something in the Galaxy War called the Galactic Readiness Level, which is just a, uh, a number that controls the overall threat level of the galaxy. And as that number goes up or down, so things are unlocked uh, in the single player multiplayer campaigns. Uh, and you can influence that number based on what you do in the multiplayer campaign and based on what you do in the single player campaign. Is that just based within your own kind of um, core experience with you and your friends, or is that global? No, it's, it's, per, it's per user, for instance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, to the single player then, the Reapers have invaded Earth. Um, and Shepard and Co. have to save Earth. Um, yep. What can you tell us about this the story without uh, ruining everything? Right? So, <laughs> you know, t just tell us a little bit about how the story starts off. Sure, so the story starts off um, on Earth with uh, Commander Shepard uh, realizing that the, uh, that the invasion is imminent and uh, uh, trying to convince uh, the Galactic Council what's going on. So uh, that's how it opens, and, uh, and it ends with pretty, pretty cool stuff happening towards the end. <laughs> the, you know, the final battle between the Shepherd and the so. Um, so you're going to have like skill classes and leveling up and, yep. and all of that sort of weapon upgrades as well. Um, and of course now all the alien races are playable, so we're, tell us a little bit more about some of the alien races and what you'll be able to do with them. So uh, each alien race is going to have its own unique uh, power ability. Um, and for those, we want to make sure that as best we could, the, uh, the, the single player, or the, sorry, the race that was uh, there for the player, um, really was differentiated, really felt like it was uh, an embodiment of that, of that race. It's the first time in the Mass Effect universe that we play different races, uh, everything's been human at this point. So we wanted to make sure that, for example, the Krogans had a real sense of mass that was played, but, and the, uh, the Drell felt very light and very quick and agile and stuff. So we needed to take those physical characteristics that were embodied in the, in the uh, races and try to capture them as a playable character. Cool. And, um... I mean, I had a little play there and some of the powers and stuff. I was playing as a Drell and quite acrobatic and light, as you say. Um, uh, so obviously a whole slew of new powers and new kind of upgrades and stuff like that. Um, is it a, an opportunity that the, the dev team said, we had all these cool ideas for stuff we just couldn't fit in. So now we've got a, a chance to, to kind of let it off the hook. Or... Yeah, there was definitely that element to it. Um, there was the start that I think when we looked at multiplayer for Mass Effect, we kept coming back to this idea that we've got so much we can do. Uh, the setting feels right with an entire galaxy of war. So uh, here's a chance to actually realize some of that. Um, it did create its own challenges as you start to develop that. You realize just how much you bite off when you want to play with our like, You learn a lot. You iterate. You start, but, but no, it definitely started with something. Uh, and it's going to have something really, really positive, really, really exciting for the development team, hopefully for fans. Have you uh, any particular favorite um, race or class that you oh, like? Oh yeah, playing, yeah. So? I like the Drell a lot. I was a big fan of Thane in Mass Effect 2, and uh, I really like how the Drell plays in this. Uh, that said, um, I'm probably uh, going to be pretty. Uh, I want to try the Krogan out too because the yeah. Krogan's pretty awesome and the heavy weapons, the, the size, but again, that sense of mass running around, instead of mashing things with your shotgun. Exactly. Yeah. You, you, when you see the when you see some of the enemies you fight in Mass Effect 3, uh, some of them are enormous, right? So it's going to be it's quite a feeling to feel like you're this big, powerful, uh, you know, playable character. And also that you're dwarfed uh, by something, an enemy that's even bigger than you. So, uh, that's all. Awesome. Uh, 
Great, so we're looking at a March kind of release? Yeah, March 6th in North America, March 9th in the EU. Excellent. And um, are we able to talk about any of the kind of pre-order stuff that you might be thinking about yet, or too soon um, perhaps? Yeah, I don't think we've announced any pre-order incentives or like that yet. So, uh, no, um, all I can say is that we're just been great. People are really excited about the game. So. Is there um, any any kind of benefit to having played through the first two? Will it uh, look for a save file and say, oh, you play these, they're really yes, Absolutely. Yeah. Follow on the story and yeah, your character and all that stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Cool, excellent. Um, well, that's it really, I think. That kind of sums it all up nicely. Thanks very much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Cheers.